Okay, so now we shall move on to uh, the face. You know, since we've gone from the inside, now we're going to the outside. Okay. Now, uh, Botox. Who wants to know about Botox? Well, everybody's scared to say, I've done before, I'll tell you first. <laughs> don't, don't say, I never say. Okay, so is Botox actually painful? Well, um, I can't say it's totally painless, but certainly I would say we try to make it as pain-free as possible. And most of us find it's, uh, well, it's bearable, maybe just like a little end bite, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Doctors, I know y'all always like, yeah, doctors always say end bite. <laughs> no, it's really end Right. So all of y'all are like, mm, it's really end bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that before. Okay. I'll tell you what it feels like. Um, okay. Botox to me. Uh, and collagen fillers. So y'all know that I've done both before. Okay. Um, it feels... Okay, the collagen filler. Have, have y'all ever squeezed your zits before? Y'all know you're not supposed to do it, but everybody does it anyway. You know you squeeze the zit before and then you got the... Can't you? Right? Okay, I know it's gross, but bear with me. I'm going to explain why. Okay, collagen filler feels like the reverse. Like something is going in. That's it. It doesn't feel painful, nothing. I don't know why doctors always say it's painful. I never use any an anesthetic, nothing. It doesn't feel... It just... Mm, that's it. So, yeah. Yep. Actually, actually, uh, actually, for yeah. those of you who are really scared of pain, and we, we know that lots of us want to look good but scared of pain, uh, Elegant actually came out with a product called Juvederm Ultra with Lidocaine, mm. which means that they incorporated the anesthesia in the product so that when you inject... Uh, it comes out with the product, so you you are you are not uh, you are not aware of pain at all, and uh, this is a very very popular product currently. Yes, just launched about three months ago. Yeah, for those of you who are interested but worried about pain, and of course, uh, as you know, uh, fillers are really FDA approved. That means they are actually quite safe. Mm. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can um, this. I see your faces. I know your questions. Now, okay, could you, could you, you, you're looking very young, obviously. So could you tell us, if you've done anything on yourself, then explain why. Oh. Y'all want to ask one, right? <laughs> right. Okay, okay. It, it's just for, it's just for this, um, this audience, right? It's mm. a trade secret. You cannot tell anybody else, okay? <laughs> you promise? Okay, Razor TV maybe has to stop <laughs> filming now, is it? <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, I've def uh, definitely done Botox because you know I tend to frown. So some Botox for the glabella frown lines, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes around the uh, the eyes as well because you know sometimes when you smile too much, you get uh, wrinkles around the eyes. So you can give a little bit of Botox there as well. Mm. And uh, well, of course you want to make your skin more beautiful, so you can do uh, an IPL. Do you, do you actually do it yourself? Uh, no, no. I, I get a, a fellow doctor to, to come in to help out. to be a bit tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for that really very special occasion, if you want to look very good, you want to tighten your face a bit, you can also use infrared and radio frequency. And what does that ladies, do? Uh, okay. It is called the, like, something like a medical facelift. But actually, uh, lots of ladies, uh, start, my youngest patient is only 31, Lots of them use it actually just That's to my young, just like <laughs> one year. To... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Me, uh, I mean, when you think of facelift, really, uh, generally you think of um, old ladies, right? I mean, really, it, uh, that's not so anymore. People want to look, you know, really tight, very smooth, very polished. Yeah. You can actually come in for uh, this uh, skin tightening or medical facelift because the infrared and refill frequency can actually tighten your pores. So well. there's no surgery involved? No, no, no surgery. So actually, what we think is that actually the medical facelift, uh, the process really is by heat. And the thermal energy or injury actually, so to speak, actually stimulates the production of collagen. So if you actually biopsy a, a patient who has done a, a medical facelift or skin tightening, you can find increased collagen in the, in the subjects who have done, who have done this procedure. So we think, uh, we believe that it's really all these procedures are quite new. It came to the market about maybe 2005. But doctors believe in the concept of collagen banking. So if you, if you start banking young, you get lots of collagen and hopefully we will not sack. Yes. So that means drinking all those collagen drinks and eating the Taoyu Tuka not going to help. Uh. Okay, uh, we're actually uh, entering a, a, a debatable topic. 
uh, collagen supplements. I, I think you want to know, yeah. Right. So many mm-hmm. people are divided. But what I think really, uh, I mean, this is my personal opinion. Really, it's really your level of uh, nutrition to begin with. I think that if uh, you are poor in your diet, you should know. I mean, if you are eating you know rubbish all the time, uh, you know, I mean, French fries, fried noodles, or, or stuff like that. There's not much protein in your diet. I think if you are really nutritionally a little deficient, certainly uh, some collagen will go a long way. But of course, if you have a perfect diet, you know, you're, you're eating a diet full of fish, meats, proteins. I believe that a collagen supplement will not uh, really be helpful. But in the instance of a medical facelift, when we're actually uh, using this collagen production to help your collagen, uh, you know, using the thermal energy to produce more collagen, that means there's a, a time or period of increased need, you can actually supplement the procedure with with a collagen intake. Because what I always tell patients is this. Now, if you're on the machine to make cloth, you must feed thread, right? Mm -hmm. So you put the thread in, you're on the machine, the cloth comes out. Now, if you're on the machine, no thread, no cloth. So, you know, it it all depends on your nutritional status. If you have lots of, you know, amino acids floating around in your diet, you're on the the machine, the collagen will be built. But if you're a little nutritionally deficient, I think a collagen supplement will help. Yeah, so yes. it will help in. But it, you you sure it doesn't just go in and then come out? Okay, the, so this is a point of debate. Uh, we are wondering, well, collagen is a very huge molecule mm. and it's really broken down uh, by the body. So how much of it gets absorbed? So of course, if you take a natural source, that means you're taking natural foods, then the chances of being absorbed is a lot higher. You know, fish, proteins, meats. But what we're talking about is really amino acids. And amino acids, as you know, I mean, technically proline, hydroxyproline, lysine, hydroxylysine, these are the building blocks of collagen. Don't worry collagen. if you don't know no, It's okay, means. you don't have to remember. Yeah. But basically, these are building blocks, all right? What you do is when you take a supplement, you're actually taking some of the building blocks, all right? So if you're taking some of the building blocks, you add in your vitamin C. We know that vitamin C also is important in the process of manufacture of collagen. And you add on this uh, uh, technique of... Uh, uh, lasering or infrared, it actually, I think, I do believe that many people actually benefit from it. Yes. Mm. Okay, I, I'm, I, I, not every doctor will agree with me, but uh, it's from like, personal experience and the experience of, of my patients. Right? All the best experience is personal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because if you, if you don't, if you haven't experienced it yourself, you wouldn't know. So. Yes.